Hello, I'm Johnny and welcome back to my channel. So today I just thought I'd show you these three books that I've been getting. Um, absolutely gorgeous they are. They're all second hand. Um, so some of them when I was there, I've been, I had them in my save list and they were really expensive. So I've waited and waited and looked, searched around to get them at a price that I could afford. So I'm just lucky I guess and I got all of these three books for under a tenner each which is a bargain. So um, the artist, the illustrator is called Rodney Matthews. Absolutely amazing art. And as you all know by now I just love books. I'm busting up the seams with books. So enough babbling, let's get into it. I've only just recently got this one so I haven't looked at it yet so we'll go through that together. So it's not like, it's not a book review, it's just um, my thoughts and just showing you some art. Um, yeah, Rodney Matthews, I haven't uh, gone into great detail about him. Um, I know he's an illustrator. he done um, posters and album covers, you know, like for record covers. Um, and some of them are from the 70s. And I was just thinking to myself today, it must have been incredibly difficult without all the, you know, digital, where you can do digital art and all that nowadays. Yeah, so, enough babbling. And as you can see there, I mean, it's just a bit of curling and stuff. That's fine. Just gives it more character. It's got a bit of water damage on the book. It doesn't bother me. Um, so I'll just uh, show you the artwork. Do I need to go in a bit more? So I won't go through the whole book, but I'll just... So that's Rodney Matthews there with his family. And he's a photographer too. You know what? I don't know if he's um, still alive. But I never went and draw that much detail. He shows you the sketches, how we came up with it. And I tell you what, it's given me so much inspiration to create. The book's a bit awkward to hold. Oh, and that's uh, Nigel Sucklin. Um, He's just saying, I first became acquainted with Rodney Matthews work in about 1974 to 75 when I was also trying to break into the poster field. Um, on a broadcast showing part of the big old posters range, which included one or two of my own works, my eye was caught or distracted by the faintly... Oh, Ra Rackham SQ, I think he's there, um, thinking about, uh, where is it, Arthur Rackham. Yeah, his il illustrations are absolutely amazing in the fairy tale books. Yeah. I mean, look at this, isn't that absolutely amazing? And that's, uh, I think that's the front cover, isn't it, yeah. I just love the detail that he's added with the trees. I think that's like line work with a micro. I mean, that must have took absolutely ages. And I love the way he's put the uh, red colour against this, uh, the dark trees. It just makes it pop. So it uh, just takes your eyes towards the middle, doesn't it? There's a faint castle at the back. Yeah, and I think these are, yeah, these are posters. I used to have loads of posters on my wall as a kid, but nothing as good as this. It was just like pop stars and that. But now I've got posters all over my living room wall. Well, it's from a calendar of art. Just can't get over the detail. 
amazing. Right, I'll skip a few pages because I've got the other two books to go through. Oh, I just love this one. I mean, there's just so many things going on with it. Look at the trees. The detail of the trees. And the shadow there. I mean, how much did posters cost in the 70s and 80s? Not much, I don't think. And I've seen them going for, well, a few years ago, two ninety nine, Massive ones. I don't know how much they are now. No ideas. Oh, and I love this one. The green on the dragon. Oh, and he does, um, or he used to do. Uh, covers for books as well. And magazines. But when I get these books, I'm just absolutely fascinated by the artwork. I just don't <laughs> read, read much. I'm just in awe with the art. I think these are from uh, the children's books that he did. And what's these? Yeah, these are the record covers. The heavy metal ones that he done are really good. Oh, you could just get lost in that. Amazing. Reminds me of the Planet of the Apes, that one. And some of the works he's put at the back of the book, I don't think they've been um, published. Yeah, so that's the end of this book. I'm just in awe with the artwork. It's just amazing. And this one uh, I got for a fiver and it's brand spanking new. Oh, sorry, I never told you what this book's called. This is called In Search of Forever. There's another one I want, and I can't remember the title. And this one's called Countdown to Millennium. And it says, text by Nigel Sucklin and Rodney Matthews. Um, so the sections are music, so that will be the music covers, book covers, uh, prints and commissions and screen. I don't know what that will be regarding to. Oh, look at that. There was a prompt on, um, was it Inktober? Flame. No, oh, that would have been good um, to look at. Because my flame didn't look very good. There's a sketch, look at the detail. Oh, this one, absolutely amazing. I wonder if that was a poster. That would look great on a wall. Oh yeah, how do I get on to this? I bought a, um, a book, it was a portfolio of Discworld and then on the back of the book it said other artists you might be interested in and Rodney ba Matthews was my favourite amongst them. That's how I got on to it.
Yeah, sci-fi. All these sketches. Yeah, and these are the record covers. Do they still do record covers like this now with really good art? Or is it just pop stars with all the bits hanging out? I don't buy much music nowadays. Many CDs. I just listen to stuff on YouTube. Oh, look at that. It's amazing. I forget what they call them, those tree people, when they're on Tolkien. I can never pronounce their either. So you've got all this uh, reading. That'll be interesting. Oh, yeah. And i seen this. Um... Alice in Wonderland, and that's why I bought the Alice in Wonderland book. Because the colours are just amazing. Yeah, I've uh, just been looking through these books every other day because, um, I mean, I'm learning to draw and, and put colour down. Give me some tips. Look at them. What are those called? The Giant Wheeze Ball. Imagine if anything like that existed. <laughs> Be a shock of seeing that floating around. Sketches. Oh, and I think there was a. I was reading that um, he designed these characters for a TV show. And um, the people who make the decisions at the top didn't like his um, drawn, so they brought somebody in. I don't know if it was Nigel Suckland to work with them to rework the characters. But I don't know if these are the original ones or what, but these look absolutely brilliant. And there he is, the man himself. Yes, yeah, so, and this is the next one. Um, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, illustrated by Rodney Matthews. It's got the dust jacket on, is it? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's better than the dust, dust jacket. Dust jacket, yeah. See, a lot of books are getting, they've got a protective dust jacket on. When you take that off, and it's just like a, a plain book. But uh, it's really nice that uh, the artwork's on the main book. So I'll just look at this. Um, Go on an adventure in Wonderland as you have never seen it before through the eyes of the world-famous fantasy illustrator Rodney Matthews, featuring a preface of Rodney himself about his interpretation of this original and experimental children's classic this is a lavish collector's edition to be treasured. Yes, well, I will treasure it. Oh, there it says a bit about him. He was born in 1945, Somerset, so he could still be alive, couldn't he? I'll have to do my research. He began drawing at a very young age and went on to study commercial design at the West of England College of Art. After serving as an apprenticeship in advertising in 1970, Rodney became a freelance designer and illustrator. Since that time, he has become an internationally acclaimed artist with a unique and instantly recognisable style. Rodney now lives in North Wales with his family. Rodney Matthews is generally acknowledged to be amazing among the greatest artists and who have ever lived. Please buy this book and all his other works because then my immense collection of stuff 
will become even more valuable, especially when he dies. John, please. <laughs> right, let's get into this book. I've been looking forward. I thought I'll save it for this video. I haven't seen it yet. I'll just pause you for a bit because I need to slap a cork. Right. Tem Templar Publishing. And when was this book? 2008. Oh, that's stunning, that. Absolutely stunning. I love the brickwork on the bridge. Oh, that would make a gorgeous picture on the wall. Yeah, and I'll have to note this. When I'm drawn, when I do leaves, I don't put holes in or where, you know, where creatures and critters have nibbled it and stuff. And I mean, leaves aren't perfect either, so I'll have to keep a note of that. And the browning. My first memory of Lewis Carroll's, I won't read it all by the way, because you'll be sick of me talking, of Lewis Carroll's Alice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was being taken to a little art deco cinema in, the Somerset, in Somerset by my elder sister Beryl. We saw Walt Disney's in 1951 animated film. I was six years old. And as I arrived home from the cinema, still elated, I rooted out some paper, pencils and paint and proceeded to create my own illustrations from memory. Although many critics would argue that Disney's film did not capture the essence of Lewis Carroll's story, for me it was a revelation and the impression it made is with me still. Mm. That's when she's fallen down the rabbit hole, isn't it? And I'll enjoy reading this story. I've met, read so many uh, different books of Alice in Wonderland, different versions. Oh, look at all these teeth. My favourite character out of Alice in Wonderland is that uh, mock turtle. Uh, someday, someday in the future, I will make a sculpture of the mock turtle. I'm going a bit. There they all are. But the mock turtle's not there, is he? No. Absolutely amazing. Oh, there you can see Alice where she's drank a portion and her arm sticking out that house window. Oh, the caterpillar smoking his pipe. I wonder if that's a vape pipe, but yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, I love those flowers. Oh, there, see, there's a one, a leaf. Imperfection looks so much better. Oh, I think I'll do some studies of leaves and sketch them out. It's when I come to add colour, that's when it all goes wrong. 
Let me sketch down there. What's that? A fish man? It looks like a seahorse and a toad. Oh, look at that. I recently done a drawing of, um, oh, what do you call it? The match hair. And it was based on this one. I've seen it on uh, online. That's what made me, because I was doing research to do the match hair. And I've seen this online. And I based my drawing on this. But mine had legs. And that's what encouraged me to get the boo, because the artwork's absolutely amazing. I mean, mine was nowhere as good as that, but I still enjoyed it. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. And I mean, it'll be a short read because the book's not very thick. But I uh, got this book for the artwork. Because those colours are just absolutely gorgeous. That's the... What are those called? Just the card men, the card soldiers. Painting the roses. Because she didn't like white roses, she only liked red. Well, why didn't she just grow red roses? There's the Cheshire Cat. And those poor pink flamingos getting bent in all sorts of different positions and then getting whacked against the hockey balls. Is it called a croquet? Is that what you call it? That posh people play. And sketch. Oh, the mock turtle story. Just love the mock turtle. Oh, look at that. Absolute. Oh, there he is. There's the mock turtle. Just love him. He's just so cute and he'd just be so interesting to make into an art doll. Gorgeous. I think I might try a sketch as well. And I forget the name of that. Oh, just noticed that. The puffin flying upside down. <laughs> Cute. Oh, there was another prompt. Let's get prompt. Air uh, Krabby. I could have done something similar to this. Air uh, Krabby. Oh, there's the lobsters. Are the lobsters or prawns? Yeah, I think they're lobsters, aren't they? They look so funny. What's that one in the middle? It's a fish, isn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately, we're nearing to the end. Oh, look at that. Absolutely amazing. There's just so many things happening on this page. What jumps out to me? The... His face. <laughs> he looks so grumpy. Oh, and that weird thing. What's that? A mud skipper. <laughs> Sketch. Cart room again. Oh, he's cute. 
Oh, on my bedroom wall, I've got a, um, I mean, it's terrible. Somebody's been taking pages out of um, the books. But there was a plate, um, and it was um, the, the lizard, and the ink is flying along the room, and it's going all over his mouth. I don't know why do people do that. I mean, okay, if the book's damaged and stuff, to rescue the plates out of it. Blasphemous it is to ruin a book. Oh. And there's the rabbit. He's late. And then this is the part about Rodney Matthews, or I've read. Um, oh, there's a bit more. Rodney Matthews was born in 1945 in Somerset, England. He began drawing while at a young age, inspired by his father, who drew Walt Disney characters on the walls of their house. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? While at school, Rodney became interested in the natural world. Bringing home squirrels, magpies, and snakes. Oh, that was like me. I was to, I always did that as a kid. Snakes, frogs, and toads. Never seen any snakes, though. The interest has continued, and evidence of it can be seen in many of the ideas in Rodney's work, which he thinks of as an exaggeration <coughs> or extensions of natural forms. After leaving school and doing a brief but accident-prone stint helping his father with light engineering and wrought ironwork, Rodney studied commercial design at the West of at the West of England College of Art. He ser then served as an apprenticeship in advertising before going freelance in the early seventies. Since that time, Rodney has become an international acclaimed artist, especially in the science fiction and fantasy genres. And his unique style has been used to create record sleeves, posters, television series, computer games, and of course a number of very popular books. Rodney Lau lives in a farmhouse in North Wales that he shares with his wife Karen and their family. Yes, I'm not going to read that other bit down there. It's just a quote by John Cleese. Yes, yeah, so unfortunately that's the end of the book. I really enjoyed this, which is my favourite. I think my favourite has to be In Search of Forever. Yes, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you, it's inspired you. Um... Maybe to get these books or inspired you to produce some artwork. Um, because I will be, be doing loads of that. I've got a few more other titles to go through. Though they're on separate videos. But they're not Rodney Matthews. Um, thank you for watching. Johnny signing out. See you bye.